Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel that is Deb Chanel's 40th World. We're going to be doing some reality TV recaps. As you know, if you go into my archives, I was heavily involved in doing and well, reviewing reality shows, and then it kind of took its turn where everything just started, you know, not meshing up. But all the shows that I was reviewing seemed to be one big thing, like a trash shit show. So I kind of like took a break, but now I'm getting back to it. I'm going to be going over reviewing Married to Medicine. Oh, yeah. And I got my advice. I got my opinions and I'm going to spill them out to you all. OK, yes. And it's all free. All right. So let's get on into it. The season we're in is seven and the episode I'm covering is Balling on a Budget, that episode four, um, what do you call it, Sh uh, show or review um, that had aired two Sundays ago. But I am just catching back up to it. And what really made me wanting to um, go in to review the show is because my girl, Jocelyn Hernandez, is on there. She made good for trash and reality shows uh personality i mean she comes with it every time you want a good read Jocelyn will give it to you she is the puerto rican prince princess uh, and she is full of fat and i had a chance to actually meet her in person that's why i say every time you get something of a reality star or maybe even a, a reality I'm not really star, but a celebrity that's in the music field or entertainment or the acting field what you get on tv is not necessarily their personality in real life but if you're not afforded to know that back end of how they get down with regular everyday people you would pretty much judge them like i have done and probably still will do uh since i don't know them kind of harshly okay but benefit of the doubt you know you do have a change of attitude once they show you something positive on an ongoing basis and not just one episode and then they go back doing that same season seven or eight more times being nasty, then you don't know. No, you can't get all of those good reviews from me, okay? But in hopes everybody is a good person with that yin and yang, you're going to show uh, the good side of you, you're going to show the bad side of you. It's just keeping an even spectrum instead of doing it all, you know, what do you call it, one way, which is being negative for the whole period time period you ever say anything about that person which i've been accused of doing but like i said it's fair game everybody have their own perspectives of how i do things how i say things and it could be far from the truth or it could be right on point but you know reality is however you perceive it to be okay uh but just to say this to say that that's what i'm gonna be doing you know i'm gonna get down with real housewives of atlanta uh, when they come back in November, but I'm picking up this show as well and going to try to follow it because it does have some uh, old cast members that I'm used to their demeanors on the show and uh, Buffy and Contessa. Contessa was coming on right when I was saying goodbye, in a sense, to reviewing Married to Medicine. So uh, I couldn't really give you a fair assessment on her, but from the point that I'm uh, reviewing from this particular uh, episode and going forward but she, you know she has definitely caught my heart because she's trying to be a superwoman out there and it's just not working out then you have Buffy the new queen on the throne or she's coming trying to play up there with Mariah which Mariah is definitely the queen of HBIC um, real I mean married to medicine sitcom show <laughs> okay she's on that chair and she ain't coming out trying to throw no tomatoes in the street with the common folks, the peasants, okay? You got, it takes a lot to bring her down. So I'm seeing a little bit of her in Buffy. But Buffy better pay close attention to her ride or die friends that's been with her since day one while she's trying to check and be friends with Toya. Because Toya, please, you know, come on. She's going to be in the circle. She's been there since day one, and it is what it is. But Buffy, you have a lot more... Uh, um, for cooth about yourself that you are shy anyway because when i first got a hold to looking at you on the show and how you were handling yourself baby you're doing real well honey you can't uh, you can't afford to have people tearing up your house and putting hands on folks and that's what you should be saying but if they want to have that little mouth lip service and, and be all ghetto or brash when they're out in public and being filmed 
and you know somebody's house then you know the bad looks are gonna come amongst them i mean you threw a, a nice party uh you had good drinks good food seems like you had good people and it was just Tori running around there acting an ass, you know, trying to be, you know, because she started it with Jocelyn from how I saw it. And Jocelyn just ended it. <laughs> and then she just kept going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny, honey. You don't mess. You do not mess with Jocelyn Hernandez, honey. That fierce side, that trash side, that ghetto side will come out and she'll be like, Rawr! she's ready for a cat fight. She'll be locked, loaded, and ready to spray, honey. So Toya can't handle her. Toya can't handle her. So basically, I'm saying, be yourself, uh, Buffett. Just be yourself, okay? But like I said, there's a lot happening on this particular episode. Only reason I tuned in and was pleasant was pleasantly surprised and i said oh i like these ladies or at least contessa and buffy they giving me something the other ladies are still you know mundane they kind of still all over the place you got jackie still trying to search for some epiphany that she's going to be happy living the world that curtis has put her back into first she was breaking out i didn't want them to necessarily get a divorce but you know Curtis was acting kind of ass at the time. And maybe he was hurting because he was used to Jackie giving him all her attention. And then when he wasn't getting it, when she was trying to search for herself, I think both, both of them were going through a midlife crisis at the time that I was watching them way back, maybe four seasons ago, maybe maybe three seasons ago. But he just got, he got to be a little bit too much to me. You know, he started acting like a female and this, that, and third he was wanting. And then he was attempting to have an affair and all this other stuff. I like Curtis, go away. You know, he was in the news back in the day of trying to call himself being seen with a woman that wasn't Jackie. And they was at a, a exclusive type, not a resort, but I think it was on a beach set. It could have been in Savannah, Georgia, Murder Beach, hello. I don't know. But he was just sunning it up and having fun with somebody other than his wife. So that was like a big teaser back at the time of whether they were going through a divorce. And then you had Cecil and, um, what was her name? Simone trying to act up because Simone, you know, didn't want Cecil telling her, you know, uh, how to be a good person. And he never took up for her and this, that, and the third. Ooh, it was just a mess. So that's why I kind of got, got discombobulated. didn't want to do anything with them anymore. But, uh, yeah, Toya going around here, inviting people to, um, you know, we're not inviting people. I'm sorry, I'm talking about, because I watched season uh, seven, episode five, too, so I'm kind of mixing them both up. But, basically, Toya attended the party with, um, the event party where you were balling under $500, meaning they're tired. They can they couldn't come any, in, ugh, they couldn't come dressed in anything but. Five hundred dollars or less, and Toya, to me, she took the MVP prize because she—I don't know where the hell she was going with the outfit she had on. It's almost like she was going to the store grocery shopping or going to hang out with, you know, some friends that maybe uh, the park or maybe they were going a little shoe shopping or, you know, just like a Saturday day afternoon with your girls, y'all kicking it at some bistro on the outside of a patio, trying, you know, do things of that nature. But, um, I, I, like I said, you know, and I don't know what the hell Eugene was wearing either. So, they, I don't know. that This wasn't a costume party. It's just like, don't be all elegant and flashy is what I got that she was trying to throw. But it, it was just a whole mess. And then you had a scene where, um, what's the name? Dr. Simone was being, oh, shady. It's just being a little shady mess. Uh, when they went into Buffy house, I mean, she just walked into the lady's house, then knock, didn't ring no doorbell and wait for somebody to tell her to come in. Hell, she just walked on in, hollering, Buffy, and, and then her, uh, I think her maid name was Sylvia. They trying to call her the house manager. Is that what they call maids these days? The house manager? <laughs> they done upgraded, child, please. Because Mariah told her to that, she said, hell, my mom was all there. And then um, she was the chauffeur, the shell, the uh, nanny, the care house giver, how you want to call it, uh, uh, the house manager. <laughs> but she, uh, Mariah still making me laugh here and there. But, you know, that's pretty much it was in a, a nutshell of a synopsis of a, what do you call it, of an evaluation of all the ladies as a whole, but then I like to break it up individually so y'all can see exactly 
Who took the fool's choice? Who took the fool's choice of wars? Who was the most shadiest on this particular episode? I say it was Toya. And Jocelyn was checking her chin, checking her every time she would open her mouth, whether it was about taxes, whether it was about being a good uh, mom, whether it was about uh, being a mom as a job. Girl, she was TKOing her, and I was loving every bit of it. Jocelyn need a role, honey. She need to be, I think they put her as a friend of the show, so she might make special guest appearances. But, honey, they need to have her on the show full time, okay? If she going to be Buffy's sidekick or not, I don't care. That did it for me last night when I was watching two episodes. The, you know, the one that I'm going over now is the uh, Balling on the Budget episode. But I'm like, girl, and I don't understand why Real Housewives of Atlanta got six people, but doggone. Uh, and they trailblazing over there with their show. But Mary the Mess, and yes, it's been around, but it doesn't equal to Real Housewives of Atlanta, especially when it comes to the drama. Uh, but they got eight people on their team. I'm like, mm, okay, okay, I'm about to watch and give it a fair assessment why they got so many players on the team in Real Housewives of Atlanta. I got six starting folks, okay? But anyway, let's go into Dr. Jackie. Okay, Dr. Jackie is over there. Uh, we're milling by herself, just acting like a tornado running around now. And to me, she still seems very empty and unloved. It's like she don't have no type of somebody she can talk to. She just, I don't know, empty as inside. I can't think of the correct words to use, but it seems like she's still coming from a damaged place in her marriage, in her career, and, you know, in her personality. Even though she got all of this um, the money, the accolades, and all the people at her doorstep. It just seems like she is fighting to get out of something. Like, she's screaming, but nobody's listening to her, if that makes sense. But anyway, she's over at this beautiful mansion of a house. Uh, I personally don't know why she bought the house. To me, from all her bitching and wanting to re- uh, renovate this, that, and a third in the house. Pretty much tearing the house out from tearing the house down from the inside out. Okay, I'm like, baby, why you would have made more sense, and I would have thought you would have had a little bit more uh, coof and understanding about the market and all of that because you've been in houses before. And I, from my understanding, you know, from when I was watching you, you wanted a studio, not a studio apartment, but apartment closer to the city because you had gave up on your dreams of ever becoming a mother. Uh, Curtis wasn't trying to sympathize with you on that, to try to adopt or, you know, anything. I see it's kind of like the same status quo. So you don't got yourself back into the suburbs where you were trying to race yourself out of because of Curtis. And it's almost like you're just disappearing under Curtis. But if that's what you want to do, be, okay, fine. I'm just reviewing what I see. And it's only in my opinion. But uh, she done got this big, beautiful house. To me, it would have made sense if she would have bought maybe five or six acres of land, built for a house she wanted. Just have somebody come up, an architect or such, uh, from a home uh, building type construction, uh, what do you call it, avenue or whatever, find her uh, or a person, an architect, uh, give him ideas of what she wanted to see in a, a house of her own, her own queendom or whatever, and let them go uh, bit by bit and do it that way. It seems like that would have made a lot more sense if she would have got what she wanted and she could have stayed wherever she was until she was able to construct the dream house that she wanted or Curtis wanted or a little bit of her and a little bit of him in there versus buying a house and tearing it down and then rebuilding it back up, which it, to me, it still isn't, I don't think you're still going to be happy because it's not filled with kids. It's not filled with love. Uh, I just, I don't know. It's just a crazy mess. But anyway, she goes in. Curtis don't hide himself some folks to come in and, and, and uh, help with the remodeling and things of that nature. He's watching costs. She's saying, bear no expense, this type of thing, which I see is going to be more so a house divided would never stand. Uh, that's just what I see. It seems like um, she's just obsessed with changing this home and to make it hers. And I don't know where that really comes from. But she wants everything big. She wants a big office. She wants a bigger master suite. Uh, she don't want no gold fixtures in her home. She want to replace them all. I don't really know what she's trying to do with that. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, she wants a chandelier in her walk-in closet. She wants her side. 
uh, versus uh, them being together. She want him to have his own side. She balled on a budget when she went to Buffy's party. She got her uh, ensemble for seventy five dollars. She says, okay, um, and she sly, kind of trying to slick shade and hire behind Buffy's back. Um, her housekeeper. <laughs> so, are you looking for a job, honey? Is this the only clientele you have, or whatever? And then, you know, of course, the mom goes, "Uh, uh-uh, she she handles her whole household, and that's all she do." So we see Buffy and her husband, or Buffy, is definitely taking care of her real well because she's invited to just about everything, and and Buffy is definitely giving her accolades. She says she's taking care of both her and her husband, which, you know, Mariah and uh, Dr. Heavenly had some slick, shady shit to say about it. But they would because, you know, it just is what it is. That's how uh, women get down uh, when they want to make their preference known and kind of tell you in a, a nice, sly way. Girl, you better watch your man. Did you hear about Arnold Schwarzenegger and how the maid got uh, him taken away from uh his wife. Did you hear, honey? Did you hear? It happens, okay? But moving on from Dr. Jack, we're going to go to Simone. Okay, Dr. Simone, her outfit, she wore to this planning event party. Well, you know, budget on a balling party. She said her outfit was no more than 150 Um, She basically turned uh, the South home that her and Curtis, no, is that Eugene? Yeah, no, that's not Eugene. Cecil, okay, her and Cecil had a, a second home, they call it the South Home, that they were commuting to back and forth. She said it had something to do with the jobs and stuff, but Curtis had, not Curtis, uh, Cecil had more money uh, uh, from something he had got into, and he wanted to invest his money. And uh, instead, I think it was something like a 401k plan thing he was trying to get, but he didn't want to pay taxes on it, so he turned it into a Real estate option, bought the second home. It's hell, it still don't make pretty much sense to me, but it is what it is. And it seems like they are struggling because they're renting out the South Home instead of them living in it now. Um, they're going to do what they should have done in the first place, just travel, commute it like most people, everyday people do for their jobs. But, you know, like I said, Cecil was doing something. Uh, I don't know. that He was trying to make revenue. I don't know. I ain't gonna lie. I, it confused the hell out of me. It still confuses me to this day. But um, Cecil over there renting his uh, South Home um, uh, in an Airbnb, uh, Airbnb type um, situation where people that want to come in, they don't have nowhere to stay. They rent out your house, this, that, and the third, pay you a fee, and it's just on like that. On and popping like popcorn, okay? Then um, she goes, her and Cecil talks to the boys, and they've grown into handsome young men, okay, uh, about having children too soon, getting with the wrong female, uh, STDs, practice safe sex, and date rape, and they were looking at her. At first, they were joking with her, then they started looking at her like she was serious. I'm like, isn't this a situation that the, uh, the dad talk about and you chime in, Simone. But, uh, you know, like I said, Simone's still running ahead of her husband. She ain't really too much being submissive. You know, she just taking, you know, the reins again and uh, pretty much taking Cecil's manhood from him. <laughs> He's just still in the background where I left him when I was uh, stopped reviewing the show. Okay, but, you know, she's still being messy, of course. I don't know what the situation is. I thought it would have gotten better between her, Quad, and Mariah, but it seems like they're still having this bitchy cat fight. They're still on each other's asses, and that's just pretty much the status quo. But as usual, Dr. Simone is still being shady as hell, and, and you know, she still got that mouth on her, and she's letting everybody know she's still here. She's going to think and do however she feels she want to do, and she's going to get in your business and tell your teeth. Two. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, all righty. And then she's still being shady as hell. She know Toya don't like Buffy for whatever reason. Maybe because Buffy is a self-made woman and she got her shit together. But, you know, and she ain't really depending on her uh, look like British English husband over there to help her. But he looks good. He's a nice uh, fixture for her. 
you know, white trophy husband of hers or however you want to put it. But yes, honey, uh, Countess, not Countess, uh, Buffy come from old money. Old hard slavery type looking like money, okay? And they were hard for, and it's through her family, and they, they don't build their empire. And, you know, Buffy's just keeping a legacy going on, okay? So maybe Tori is upset about that, and maybe Dr. Simone's a little shady as well, okay? So, uh, it's just like, uh, old money, you know, your money, your family, family before they had money and it's just being dropped and draped and dripped on her at this time. She's going to leave it for her kids or, uh, or nieces and nephews and they going to be able to partake of it when we did and gone. Okay. That's just how it is. That's how lineage is when you got it going on like that. So, um, let me see. Dr. Small, Small just still being her. Flashy, acting trashy sometimes, and then want to act the victim at other times. And so she's still hidden below the veil, uh, uh, from what Quad is saying and what she's displaying. Um, and she's also telling um, Buffy to definitely look out because when you go against Toya, half the time you're gonna be apologizing to her. And, and uh, Buffy, so I ain't apologizing to nobody. I did it this time, but she could forget that I ain't on, I ain't nobody's ass gifts. So that was pretty much that with uh, Dr. Simone. We're gonna go into Miss Buffy. Like I said, she's old black southern woman, kind of give me Phaedra uh, Parks tease. You know what I'm saying? She has like a, a Texas empire. She does taxes, I guess, for the rich and famous and for common folks as well. Uh, she Kind of gives me that old school meets new school when having um Jocelyn as one of her um uh, friends of the show and she got a good ally there because honey and Jocelyn be ready to go and fight for her friends <laughs> the longer they respect her and treat her nice she she don't have she don't have a uh anything against telling her off not at not one you want her in your corner all day every day okay because she's gonna tell you from a street uh, position as well as you want me to go fuck up for you because <laughs> I, I, I don't care I, I already got you know felonies and charges and all this stuff misdemeanors I don't care don't mean that to me just as long as you got my bail money because I can't stay in jail overnight okay I can't do that now you can go and let me get booked but bring me back out so she's that kind of friend so I'm like oh, you need to be paying more attention to being loyal to Jocelyn than you trying to smooth and, and rub elbows and, and hugs with Toya because Toya would turn on you just like you know she didn't ever know you and she trying not to know you now Buffy so straighten up and fly right you doing girl you doing good girl you got your aces in the hole you got everything stacked up you don't need to pay Toya no mind <laughs> anything be friends with Mariah she gives me such tease and she holds herself to such a high standard okay and you just need to be schmoozing over there with Mariah and Aiden okay just leave Toya and her broke husband ass alone. And I know Eugene is not broke, but fooling with Toya again, he gonna be uh broke. He gonna be broke again and they're gonna have to downsize again because it seems like he got Toya uh still wrapped around well Toya got Eugene still wrapped around her finger. She's still demanding and, and, and implying that he need to do better. <laughs> so child please with Eugene. That's in the week, but we ain't on him yet. But um uh, her husband is seems like I said an English British type guy. He seems a little bit out of place, but he seems very personal, I don't, personable. Uh, he seems like he want to get everybody a chance. He don't understand much so of the foolery and and the fuckery going on. But he's trying to play his part. He's trying to be loyal to his wife and her platform she's building for herself as well. You know they like living comfortable. I'm, he seems like he come from money too, but it seems like. Uh, Miss Buffy, she's running everything over there, and she has her trophy white husband, and she's playing all those parts, and she's loving and living life, okay? Um, and she seems like she has a happy marriage. I, like I said, I'm just coming in, viewing on her, but she seems like she has everything on deck other than being the boss of everything. And I, I could be wrong on that situation. Um... But it seems like she let him tend to the mundane issues of the household and, and all that stuff. But I am with Dr. Heavenly as well as Mariah, honey. You got that pretty, like 
uh, what's his name? Heavenly has said that that lady that uh, looking all pretty, that Brazilian ass downstairs. You better watch her, honey. You better watch her. Okay, so I'm with her too. You don't have somebody that nice looking. That seems like she's very intelligent to be walking around your husband. Because while you out and about making your dollars out there in the streets, she could be, you know, laying up in your house at home. But hopefully you got cameras. <laughs> And you ain't letting your husband know where all those cameras are at. So you can probably catch your brother in the act and then seek litiga litigation against him moving forward. Okay. Um, like I said, um, she was letting Toya be in a little bit too shady towards her friend Jocelyn because to me, what I saw, Jocelyn did not start it, but she definitely finished the shit. Okay. But then, you know, Buffy inviting Jocelyn to the playground, but then telling her how to conduct herself. Now, that's not how you do your old and loyal friends you've known much, much longer than Toya. How to please, as long as they ain't putting their hands on each other and Toya started this shit. I wouldn't have said then, but look at here. Don't y'all tear up my furniture. Don't y'all sit up here and, and get assault charges by hitting one another. Y'all can go back and forth with all the banter. I don't care because that's what this show is. They want to get a drama. I got it on deck, okay? But I don't talk y'all the two things y'all shouldn't do. And I would have just been going back and forth like I had popcorn and a soda watching a movie between them two because they were giving me all and then some. Um... And, you know, Buffy need to stop trying to apologize so much to Toya because Toya ain't worth all that. Toya got a slick slide mouth herself. And if she get in the shit, she ought to be able to stand in the shit and get herself out of it, okay? But you can't control other people's demeanors and, and their behavior. As long as it don't get physical, where it's going, uh, hands are going to be connecting with face and body, then, you know, it just is what it is. But they have that contract like the Real Housewives of Atlanta. They can't take litigation against each other anyway, okay? But go check out that video, Rules and Regulations of the Housewives, okay? I don't know if it's exactly titled that way, but if you go through my archives, you'll bump, you'll bump and run up. You'll bump into it or run into it, however you get down, okay? So go check that video out. We're going to move on to Toya. Toya is still the same old trashy, talking, acting. Same, same and change since I left her. Still, okay? Uh, she's fussing, fussing with Jocelyn about the whole ordeal, about uh, what do you call it? Being a home, stay-at-home mom is a job. This, that, and third. And Jocelyn saying, "No, nah, that's not a job. In my opinion, it's an honor, it's a privilege, and it's a joyful type of job." Okay? And uh, Jocelyn's self-made. She's doing her own thing. She's controlling. Her narrative of her story being written in full real lifetime. And, you know, it just is what it is. Some people see it as uh, being a housewife, a mom, a wife as a job, while others see it as, you know, being fulfilling. And that's what they strive to be be like and do in their lifetime is being caregivers to others okay but you know i see both um points of view when it comes to both women uh especially if you're trying to get a divorce and you want to count that as income <laughs> and a job like yeah let's get paid on this situation this brother ain't leaving me out in the cold with his children and he still lived the life that i was a customer of. then yeah it comes uh relevant then but uh just as long as the husband and wife or the wife and wife or the husband and husband understand the playground when they call themselves want to be one. Uh, and they set the tone. It don't matter. Per, per, uh, it doesn't matter whose perspective or uh, people on the outside looking in on your situation. You don't really care about their opinions. OK, are they paying any of your bills? Are they handling y'all situations when it comes to misbehavior? You know, are they there for you 100 if they're not on all three fronts? Uh, then pay them no mind, okay? But uh, Buffy seems like a, a nice woman who got it all together, family-oriented, and she tries to be friends with just about everybody she come in contact with. Um, she needs to stop making friends with Toya and stop trying to play nice with her. Whatever Toya you give her, she need to give it back to her in uh, major doses. Uh, like I said, Toya was basically uh, trying to throw shade to Jocelyn and Jocelyn was saying, girl, that's, you know, I, uh, we don't need to worry about paying your taxes because your outfit is looking struggling. <laughs> Hello, girl. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I can't. Then, you know, Toy Steele, like she fighting with Mariah. Uh, and, you know, she don't like Bussy. 
and she don't know why uh Simone keep putting her in their circle. I'm like, girl, how many people you didn't like? You didn't like uh what's her name? Oh, that lady. Um uh, uh shoot, it was it Lisa? No, it wasn't Lisa. Damn, I can't think of her name. Light skin, had two kids by the cheating husband. Darren, Darren. Oh, y'all know who I can't think of her name, but yeah, um, she was fussing with her all the time as well. Um, she's still playing Eugene like a flute. Eugene is down there, uh, telling buying shoes for her. You know what? What, what man do that? You know, I'm like, what? I mean, not not that it's unexpected. If it's a pair of shoes she wanted, I could see that. But you dressing her, you you, you I, I you you being like a uh, toy servant and not her husband. I'm not understanding. I'm just not understanding you, Jane. You, 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 you're being too much like a servant, like a maid running around there instead of her husband, but then you want Toya to respect you. Okay, brother. All righty then. Then, uh, like I said, the attitudes got to be real bad in a sense uh, with uh, at the party that they were having and, and somehow... Jocelyn brought it back in the inside. She liked it, uh, Jackie's husband, but she was telling uh Eugene, your husband full your wife full of shit. She a hoe. <laughs> so it seemed like Eugene was out there fighting with uh Jocelyn. Then he had to come find Toya to say, You know what she told me? She called you a hoe, but I got a boo, I got I told her. And and you know, then Toya gonna be like, What she called me a hoe? Da, 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 da. You know, trying to blame Buffy for everything. And Buffy, Buffy said, well, you know, I can't stand this baby bad behavior. Let me go find these people, see what they're doing. Hopefully they ain't tearing on my house, you know. But she's trying to, you know, do damage control, but Toya ain't hearing it. Toya said, Let's go, we leaving. And Eugene said, Yes, we don't need these people. <laughs> I was like Boy, monkey see, monkey do. Oh, Lord. It's too much. It's too much. Okay, Toya is cool. She's fun. She's loving. But she's annoying at times. And this was one of the annoying times that she was. Okay, and then she getting on Eugene about not. Oh, child. Just, she's just doing too much. She really, really doing too much. I mean, I'm like, Toya, girl, uh, did you? I know you were trying to get all this filming in and that house being built, but sometimes houses, if you ain't got the revenue flowing like it's supposed to be, your house can't go accordingly, okay? But it could have been wet. It also could have been weather constraints. You know, you can't be building a house when it's storming outside and this, that, third. So we just don't know all the factors that played a part in to why your house is not ready for you to move into. So it's just a hot mess with her, uh, saying the least. Then we go on to Miss Quartner. Really much to say about Quartner. She's still doing her. She's still fussing with Greg. She's still going through her divorce. She's still into it with uh, Dr. Simone and Mariah. Nothing new. She wore two thousand, I'm not two thousand two hundred twelve dollar outfit to Buffy's party. Moving on to Mariah, nothing's new there. She coming in, look like she's five hundred plus, but she's saying in euros <laughs> that she her outfit was three hundred thirteen dollars. Uh, she's shading um, Buffy about not letting that maid get too close to her. She's shading uh, to her husband. She's shading. Uh, Quad still, they they still not together. Uh, she's still trying to shade and stir up trouble between Dr. Heavenly and her husband. Uh, uh, speaking on maybe somebody's uh, having an affair <laughs> behind somebody's back. Oh, there's a whole lot of mess she's doing. Still same on Mariah. Still same on Mariah. Dr. Heavenly, she's still trying to act like Phaser Parks and stuff. And, uh, like, she's the, uh, you know, still playing that holy, holier than thou type of um, situation. She's shading Buffy every time she gets a chance. She's uh, just too much. She's even trying to get in the quad situation by overhearing her conversation about, um, you know, Greg and the stuff she's going through with her lawyers and things of that nature. Dr. Heavenly still being Dr. Heavenly. Contessa's favorite of mine. She's basically um, juggling too many things at one time. And from what I understand, just looking at little clips they play us, she's basically over there um, doing too much. And she's having a breakdown and she had to stop working for a chance because everything 
kind of got so overwhelming for her. She had a nice husband to say, hey, baby, take a break. I know you got a lot on your plate. Just be my uh, ride or die. Take care of them kids at home. Take care of their education. Be the mom, the mother and thing, and I'll make the money. So now she don't look like she's trying to do all of that and then some. She's being a dutiful wife. She's being a dutiful mom. She has her career still in place, and she's adding to that secondary education, a third a fourth second, you know, education added onto whatever she, she already has. And it's just being too much. And she chose a school that is definitely way out of the way than in a, being in Atlanta. I forgot where it was. I think it was North Carolina. I'm not really sure. But she commutes from being at school Monday through Friday. She comes home on Friday evening and spend what little time during that weekend she has with the family trying to play catch up. But her oldest daughter's rebelling. She's not liking it. It seems like Dad is using the kids against mom by letting uh, them tell her how they really feel about her being away uh, all the time. And, you know, I'm like, you know, men, uh, maybe one or two percent or can be motherly and nurturing just like a female can in a relationship. Because sometimes you have females that are not as mo uh, uh, mothering that they should be uh, because of them being mother. You know, we're supposed to be the nurturers. The, the dad's supposed to be the providers and sometimes it seems like it has blurred the lines have been blurred to where women has definitely been roaring out here and they've really forgotten about when they having children having a husband there's certain things you got to submit to and you should want to especially if your husband is providing for you uh but she seems like a, she has a feminist spirit in her meaning you know i could do everything a man could do i could provide i could get the bacon Go out there and get the bacon, or bring it home, serve it up, and then do some with it. Some milk with it, you know what I'm saying? So um, she's struggling with all of that, and the daughter, the oldest daughter, going around him punching walls, wanting to punch boys in their faces, trying to put hands on them. She's really telling her mama, "Ah, right, you need to stop all this secondary, third, and fourth education uh, accolades you're trying to get." To be whoever you're trying to be. You're my mom right now. I need you. All the other stuff need to be on the back burner. Or guess what? You ain't paying attention to me now, but I'm going to make you pay attention to me. That's the kind of attitude this young lady got. Uh, to me, you know, not sparing the rod on this one. You know, tell a lot. But, you know, that's the way I was brought up. And, you know, we, we let kids stay in kids' places. And then again, they didn't have reality shows back then where it showcased your kids. But... You know, she just, she's very in tune with what the family's trying to tell her, but she's still trying to have her keep cake and eat it too. And it's just, you know, she's burning both ends of the spectrum to where she's going to have a nervous breakdown. She ain't going to be able to do anything. So that's basically, uh, she's regretting and she's scolding her husband for not really being there with her in full force like she would be with him. She's thinking, he should be a little bit more nurturing, a little bit more understanding to where the kids are going. And, you know, to talk with her so she can have phone conversations with them if need be. But, uh, you know, he's using the kids. He's using himself to get her to know what she's doing is wrong. Uh, she needs to come back home and all that kind of stuff. But schools for her at this point uh, is a very big distraction for her as well as the whole family. And it's all trying to, like, disintegrate right in front of her. But I'm sure she's a a, a well-thought-out woman, and she can make it work if it can be worked out. But if not, it's just going to put too much more stress on her mentality, as well as once the mental starts to suffer, the body starts to suffer. So she needs to think about putting it on the back burner for now and raise them kids to a certain degree, and uh, where they can come big, come with a little bit more understanding and uh them thinking less of themselves so their mom can continue to be the woman she's trying to be and then some. But that's all I have for this video. I know it ran a little bit longer, but I wanted to touch bases with you all at the beginning uh, and tell y'all what I was about, how I get down with my reality review shows and this, that, and the third. Usually they try to run 20, 25 minutes, but like I said, I had to introduce myself to you all. I had to give you a formulation of what I, where I was going with it. Hopefully you like this video. Uh, thumbs up this video. Share this video. And definitely subscribe to my channel. But that's all I had. Like I said, it went a little longer than I anticipated. But take this video in short bursts. 
and oh, I'm sure you will enjoy it. But I'll see y'all next video. Thank you, and bye-bye.